Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, praise the Lord, everybody. He is worthy to be praised. I don't know, maybe I have the wrong Bible, but I believe it says from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same. I ain't see it set yet. So can someone give God some praise up in here? Amen. We come to celebrate what God has done through a man. Amen. Let's not get it twisted. We still celebrating God, but we're celebrating what he did through an individual. Amen. But this day is ultimately about him. It's ultimately about him. So we have a rule here at Mount Zion. If you don't praise, go home. If you ain't here to praise the Lord, go home. Because that's what we come to do. We come to give the Lord some praise. And now you may do it differently than I do it, but I still expect you to praise the Lord while you're here. Amen? You may not sing as well as they do, but go ahead and lift your voice. If the person next to you moves to the side, that's all right. You ain't singing for them anyway. Sing it to the Lord. You're welcome to dance if you want to. Just keep your clothes on. We ain't that kind of church. Amen? But we're here to celebrate what God has done through a man. So this choir is going to open us up, and then we'll proceed with our program. Come on, stand on your feet if you can. We're here to celebrate Jesus today. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know he's worthy of the praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Praise. Come on, put your hands 
together. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 You're worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, choir. Help me say it. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, Alto. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we praise you. Come on, soprano. If you love the Lord, Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Come on, tenor. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Come on, just wave your hands if you love the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Hallelujah. He has been a lifetime member there. He uh, has pastored three churches. He's a family man. He's a farmer. And most of all, he's a... So I just... Um, and introduce to others, Ralph Williams. Praise the Lord. I'm like pastor. Praise the Lord. I really don't know how to say it in Spanish. <laughs> and I'm a long ways from being able to say it in Chinese. But in English, praise the Lord. Amen. We will now have an opening selection by a choir. All of you who have a, a program will see that the Negro National Anthem is our song, and we're going to ask everyone to stand as we sing, uh, lift every voice and sing. After which, the scripture will be read by Bishop Robert Lewis Taylor of the Mount Olives Church in Centerville, Virginia, and prayer by Deacon Tyrone Reed. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I'll do it with the mic. Good afternoon, everyone. Amen. Good afternoon. Amen. Our scripture will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, beginning our reading at the fourth verse. Dr. King said so eloquently, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse 4 and following. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. And this is a verse I like here, this part. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether they are prophecies, they will fail. 
whether they are tongues, they will cease. Somebody say, hush up. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I comprehended, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, come on, help me somebody in this church, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but when the mist had been rolled away, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Let's do this part together. And now abides faith, hope, charity, but the greatest God bless you. God bless you all. Amen. You may be seated. Father God, 
You allowed him to go to the cross, they allowed him only to die, but he gave us the opportunity to have a chance of eternal life if we follow him the right path. Stay on the path, stay focused on that path. Now we ask you, Father, to touch this choir, bless them right now in the name of Jesus. Touch all the courage of men that are assembled here today, Lord. We want you to know we just love you, Father God. Praise your holy name. Give you all the glory and honor that you so rightly deserve. We love you and thank you for what you've done for us now, what you're doing for us in the past, and what you're going to do for us in the future. We just love you. Thank you, Father, for this day. Bless all that have come out today. Every family represented here today, Lord. Touch them in a mighty way. Let them see with spiritual eyes on this day and hear with spiritual ears what's going to be said, dear Lord, for my speaker of the hour today. Continue to strengthen us, Lord, in our weakest moments. We love you and thank you. In the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 This is a prayer song unto God, and it says, Hear our prayer, O Lord, incline thine ear to hear. Hallelujah. Now we'll have our welcome in poetry by Dickamus Paulette Carter, after which we will have another selection by this very fine choir. Aren't they doing a fabulous job? Amen. Amen. And I, you know, when, when you let a preacher up in, he's all by himself. 
and we get kind of nervous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but I want to say to this choir, y'all look very nice in your red and black. Thank you, Pastor. And your clothes don't make you a Christian. Amen. It's what's in your heart yes. that make you what you're supposed to yes. be. Yes. Amen. Thank you very much. Oh, excuse me. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good so good to see so many of you. My goodness. My gosh, give yourselves a hand for being here. I'm here first to welcome you. So on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Keith McCullough, and our first lady, Sister Annette McCullough and her family and their family, and our entire Mount Zion family, we welcome you today in the spirit of love and togetherness. I would like you to do me a favor though. Right where you're sitting, turn to the person on your left and your right. If there's nobody on one side of you, then of course just turn to the other. We have a comedian over here. So turn to your left and your right if there's someone there and just give them your warmest smile and say, hello, welcome. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so when I was given this um, to welcome you and to do the poem, I thought of asking other people what, you know, a question. And the question was, in a word, and I did say that to preface, I said, in a word, what do you think the world needs now? And, you know, some people couldn't do it in a word. They were trying to sing to me. They know who I'm talking about. And you know what they were singing, right? What the world needs now. We all, we all know that song. So we have here with the help of Sister Gwen and Sister Gabby, the results of the survey, as you can see. And love won, right? And it made me think of a wedding I went to some years ago, a friend of mine, and she gave these handouts. You know, you get little gift things. And it said, love wins, period. That's it, love wins. And so we have God. Somebody said God four times. Four people said God. Four people said Jesus, but God is love, right? And Jesus, he, he came and so loved the world. So Jesus is love, right? And then we had peace and kindness, and those are the fruit of the spirit, right? So when you think of it, it's, it's love. It's all about love. And as I was listening to the, the round table or square table that they had discussion this morning, Love came up many, many times. I hope you all had a chance to listen, or we'll go back to it and listen to that. So, yeah, it's all about love. Do my poem. Supposed to be sharing with you. You can hear me, right? Okay. The title is "Unwavering Justice." Unwavering this program. So, if you'd like to follow along, our theme is for justice. We're not doing anything. We a difference. Right? For justice, I will make a difference. So I have two quotes. The first one is a scripture from John 13, verse 35 in the NIV version. And it says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. There's that operative word again. And then there's a closing quote at the end by Dr. Martin Luther King. The word of God tells us that God's spirit lives in us. That's Romans 8, 11. What does that mean? Does it mean that we must be obedient to God's word? That there is a line we do not cross? And if we cross the line, is it clear there is a cost? For justice, where do you draw the line? between us and them, or between right and wrong? Will you stand up for others, advocating for them, when they cannot stand up or speak up for themselves? Will you put yourself in someone else's shoes? Will you come to their defense when evil and ignorance conspire to inflict 
pain and misery, robbing others of their peace and dignity, taking from them their fundamental rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as stated in the Declaration of Independence, and blithing any hope of harvesting their God-given gifts and abilities. There are some who seek positions of power, not to serve, but for self-aggrandizement, the outgrowth of which, which is discrimination, born out of selfishness and greed, and later metastasized into oppression. Romans 12.21 tells us, urges us, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. For the sake of justice, then, stand on the side of righteousness, secure in the knowledge that in Christ we live and move and have our being. That is Acts 17, verse 28. Therefore, we must not waver. And the closing quote is from Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He says, we must use time creatively in the knowledge that the time is always right to do right. Thank you.
Amen. When y'all finish today, uh, y'all know where 688 is. <laughs> All y'all know where 688 oh, is. Yes, sir. Well, if you come up 688, you'll pass by Providence. <laughs> just, just come on up the road another four miles and Mount Morris sits up on the left hand side. We'll be looking for you Sunday morning. Yeah. I'll play a trump back. <laughs> right down the street. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now we'll have a tribute to Reverend Lenmuel Montgomery, who was the pastor of the Mount Moriah Baptist Church in Amosville, Virginia. Uh, by Deacon John Harrison. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Saints. Uh, Reverend Lemuel Adolphus Montgomery, a good friend of mine, started Martin Luther King observation as soon as the date was uh, set aside by the government. He started at Mount Zion Baptist Church honoring Martin Luther King. One of the first things that he did was to get together a choir. Montgomery loved singing. Amen. He called himself the, Mont the Martin Luther King Choir. This choir came from all over the area, many, many churches. And Mr. Skip, thank you for continuing this. Amen. And Amen. it's going very well. The choir was pulling in so many people that it got too large for Mount Zion, so he moved it to Highland School. And they had the choir presenting, and they gave awards and this type of thing there. Couldn't get all the people that he wanted because some was in their local churches and stuff, so he went that afternoon out to the community college. So he had this Martin Luther King choir at the Highland School and at the community college. Montgomery was very gifted. He was able to write and direct many plays that he put on at Afro-American Historical Association. It was attended by many, many people. I remember his giving of the awards here and the awards went to education and I'm so glad, Sister Paula, that I see that you are continuing this process. Amen. Reverend Montgomery was not only a teacher, a preacher, but he was a heck of a good friend. Yes, yes. And he was, the, uh, as mentioned, the pastor of Mount Moriah Baptist Church in downtown Amosville, Virginia. <laughs> he loved his children. I called him once Junie. I called him Junie because he was so much, I said, you're so much like Martin Luther King. You, you're Junie. You, you're not on a preacher. You love people. You're getting around. You're doing something. But you might not have known that he also led a protest back in 1968 at the integration of schools in Fauquier County. We had some students that went to Fauquier High and some black students did not like what they had what they call a sit-in. And when they had to the sit-in, the principal said, y'all not going to get away with that stuff up in here. He suspended the students. Several of those students were seniors. This was affecting their graduation. And Reverend Montgomery said, oh, we can't let this happen. We must do something. So he led. You know what I'm talking about. He led a group of us together. We got together. We contacted parents and had them backing us up. Went to the school board. Montgomery led us there to convince the school board that these children should not be suspended from school. Not only did he preach, not only did he teach, not only did he love his children, but Montgomery Love God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much Amen. for letting me give Amen. this tribute Amen. to him today. Amen. Amen. And in closing, I say, rest in peace. Liam Montgomery. Amen.
Now we'll have another selection by this very fine choir, The Voice of Hope. Harmony and peace be still. <laughs> all right. I am passing. You can do it all. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody said, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will what? Rejoice. I don't know about you, but it might be cold outside, but it's still sunny. So I'm going to praise the Lord for the sun. So as you all see, there's a choir here, but I believe there's a choir out here as well. So we're going to sing this song. It's a really easy song. And I hope you guys learn the song with me. I'm going to teach it to you, okay? We're going to make it real easy, okay? So all my sopranos, raise their hand. If you're a soprano. Okay, okay, okay. I like, I see, yeah, always sopranos. I bet you're going to be born altos, but it's okay. Sopranos, here we go. You're going to say, harmony, harmony, around. Harmony, Sopranos, you're gonna help them out. Ready? Here we go. Sopranos, sing. sopranos y'all should have been singing okay all the sopranos i raised their hand now if you're alto the next one down raise your hand any altos here okay good 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 so altos you're gonna say the same thing but you're gonna sing it lower you can do harmony harmony around the world favorite part tenors tenors do we have tenors out there do we have tenors I, okay tenors y'all ready y'all ready okay tenors are gonna show out y'all know what happens the tenors starts thinking everybody's like woo all the time okay so tenors harmony that's where you're at ready one two three harmony harmony around the world those low people, you know? The people that sing so low, so low, yeah, okay. Y'all got that, some of y'all got that, so low, okay? And if you're singing bass, you can sing along, but if you're not singing bass, and you say, I don't know how to sing, you are now the joyful noise section. So you just <laughs> clap, 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 okay? So here we go, basses, one, two, three. sing, okay? Everybody got that. I'm gonna give you a real quick rehearsal, okay? All you singers. Non-singers, you're clapping. Clapping. <laughs> clapping. Got it? Got it? Yeah, okay, good. Harmony. So, sopranos, harmony. Altos, harmony. Tenors, harmony. Tenor, I mean, basses, 
Harmony. Ready? Together. One, two, three. Harmony. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Harmony is what we need. Amen. You know, we do a lot of talking, but when it comes time for us to get together, we don't know how to do that. Amen. But well, I like this song. I like this beat. We're going to do it one more time. Okay. Harmony. Harmony. Montgomery love praise, you know, and I'm one of his seeds. I used to sit on the front pew of Mount Zion when Joan played, and then he got on the organ, and then he played. So he's planted a lot of seeds with his ministry, with his God, and with his family. 
Amen. And there are a lot of seeds up here. Raise your hand if you're a seed from Reverend Montgomery. Amen. Amen. Don't be shy. God knows. Amen. We're going to do a song in tribute to him. Peace be still. You know, I've been reading the scripture. When the disciples, when the storm hit, and they go, I'm just paraphrasing, I'm not going to try to quote it. And they go, don't he care about us? The storm is raging. And he's sleeping in the bottom. But see, it's not about the ship on the water. It's about the ships in our life. You know, when those storms come, know that he's there. He's just saying, don't fear. Wait on me. I got you. I got you. So we just got to say, peace. Peace. Amen. Peace. First, giving out to God, I want to let you know, Reverend Montgomery used to have my Tomcat Carla, James Cleveland. I had, do not have James Cleveland's voice. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs> Master, the tempest is raging. Oh, the billows are tossing a high. The sky is foreshadowed with blackness. No hell shelter is nigh. Fearest thou not that we perish? How can thou lie, lie asleep? When it seems like each moment so madly is threatening. A grave, a grave in the ang angry deep. Get up, Jesus. Obey. 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 All you have to say is. Oh, yes, peace be still. Peace. Whether the storm or demon or me. Swallow the ship where lies. Oh, the master. And earth and sky. They all shall. All you have to say is, I'm looking. When you're lonely, when you're burdened, where the the storm. Demons, oh men, or whatever, the 
the master. The ship where lies the master. you have to say is I'm looking when you're burdened when you're lonely I'm looking for when you're burdened peace be still yeah when you're burdened when you're lonely, I'm looking for peace, be still, be still. You know, I could keep on going, peace, say peace in the morning, peace. In the noonday, peace. At the midnight hour, peace. When the storms are raging, peace. Oh, peace. Peace, 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 peace. Peace. Be. Be I really don't need this. <laughs> uh, now we'll have our award ceremony. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy New Year. It's a blessing to see all of you in the sanctuary, and I hope there are people that are tuned in and watching virtually. I hope there's a whole bunch of you tuned in. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is well remembered for his numerous riveting and inspiring speeches, sermons, and quotes. The quote that fits our recipient for our 2023 Reverend Dr. King Jr. Award in Religion is, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Our recipient at 82 years old is very well known in our community for his tireless service for 54 years. He is a beacon of light, using his life as a launching pad for others, building relationships with people of every color and background. He has seen wars in foreign lands and America during the civil rights movement and the Jim Crow era. He committed his life to Christ to serve him in every way so that God is glorified. He has helped catechize hundreds of men and tested them to see if they were ready to help lead their church in spiritual matters. Men at Mount Zion, men at Ebenezer, men at Oak Grove, men at Oak Shade, and men at Olive Rectortown and Mount Olive Stafford. He is truly a soldier of the Lord, spending his life fostering a spirit of brotherly love. Most recently, he assisted the annual event to deliver turkeys to, to first responders and has served for 45 years in the prison ministry, 50 years Bible study, 20 years Baptist Center, 35 years music ministry, 37 years Lot Carey Global Mission, serving in every position possible as a deacon. Psalm 90 verses 10 says, the days of our years are threescore years and 10. 
And if by reasons of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. The 2023 Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. community recognized this deacon, commonly known as the Mayor of Catlett, a man who has exhibited the highest moral, spiritual, selfishness, and praise to keep on serving the Lord and bring the community together through honoring and loving one another. Our 2023 Reverend Dr. King Award recipient and religion is from Heart's Delight, Deacon Otis Morton. Please come up. and we pray, thank God for you and may he continue to be in your spirit and may you continue to do the work that you do. God bless you. Amen. service. <clears throat> this individual is a member of First Baptist Church in Manassas, Virginia. First and foremost, he loves the Lord with all his heart and his soul. He loves his family. He loves his two communities of Prince William and Fauquier County. He has two adult children. He is a very kind and humble individual and always willing to help hand, to be a helping hand where needed. This individual's lifelong career started after graduation from AT&T, North Carolina in Greensburg, North Carolina in 1982. He was an engineer for IBM for 10 years, de designing solar systems for submarines. IBM sold the company, you all probably know more about this than I do, but they've changed hands and every time they changed hands, he went right along with them. <clears throat> and two, in 2015 to present, this individual earned a new position with BAE Systems as a program manager of the product center that designs space chips for the U.S. government. This individual is serving and volunteering in For several years, he coached a little league football team in Laurel, Maryland. He also <clears throat> coached youth soccer along with his children. County Parks and Recs. Also volunteers his time and efforts with the Charles R. Anderson American Legion Auxiliary Unit 360, helping with their events, and he definitely helped with the events here at Mount Zion. Just as a little side, <clears throat> whenever we would see this young man come in, he'd be holding two buckets of chicken. And I thought, you know what? This person could probably invent a cologne that smelled like chicken because he had brought that many of them in. So would you please join me in honoring Mr. Everett Drew as our nominee for the Community Service Award. notice as he come up that he doesn't have to bring any chicken up this time. He has probably already boarded in. Thank 
card. And, and we would like to present this award as a token of our appreciation. We feel that you are a member here of this church because we see you working as hard as anyone else. God bless you and may God continue to watch over you. Amen. Let us give another round of applause to those who received awards today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Martin, God bless you. I uh, did a funeral one time. I was way down, working down near Catley. And I went into 7-Eleven get me a soda. And who did I see but him? And he quoted me exactly what I said at the funeral. I said, how did you know? He said, I was there. I was there. <laughs> One of the Morton clan. Amen. Now, you know, they say this is a time where everybody can take a part. Uh, this is a part of worship. Let me say it again. This is a part of worship. Amen. Amen. So we're going to turn it over to uh, our trustees and ushers for our offering. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> so good to see you all here today. It is offering time. <laughs> and there are many ways that you can give to this ceremony today. You can go onto our website, www.mountzionva.org. You can press the Give Now button and be directed to Givelify that way. There's an envelope out there for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King a ceremony today. You can give that way. Or you can download the Givelify app on your Android or your Apple device. If you have that with you today, you can download Givelify, search for Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church here in Warrington, Virginia, and you can give that way. Or you can mail it in. If you leave here, you don't have it today, you can mail it in. 33 South 3rd Street, Warrington, Virginia. You can drop it off here at the door if you're in the area. And here today, we will be directed by the ushers. We will pray over it, and then we'll be directed. Heavenly Father, we come to you today just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for another day, another day for us to get it right. We lift this offering up to you, dear Lord. Please bless it, and please have us to do with it your will, dear God. We bless all of those who could give and those who had it not to give but had it in their heart to give. These and all things we ask in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Testing, testing.
gentle, gentle Savior. Gentle, gentle Savior. Don't you pass me by, my Lord. Don't you pass me by, my Lord. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Me. I want to know, do you know him? Do you know him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now, now, uh, after a song like that, I know for a fact that all these preachers, <laughs> amen, want to say something. Now this ain't on the program. But I'm going to ask all of them to stand and just give your name and what church you're from. Baptist Church. Turn on Chapel of the World Ministries. Amen. And I'm quite sure. Uh, I'm quite sure that Mount Zion appreciates all of you guys uh, from your busy yes, schedule of today. Uh, Bishop, you, you, what you got? You, you might go ahead and say your name and your church. Why are you coming in? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure that Mount Zion appreciates all of you coming today out of your busy schedule to celebrate on this Martin Luther King anniversary. Amen. Amen. We thank you for allowing me to come and be in your worship leader today. And now we're going to turn it over to Pastor McCullough that he may come and introduce the keynote speaker. Amen. And give her a round of applause before she comes. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, all you who are here. Come on, let's give this choir a hand clap. Of hands. So people like to say we're many churches. I disagree. There ain't but one. Amen. We many churches, it's a bigger problem. Ain't but one church, amen. We might be in different locations, but it's just one church, amen. Just one. So I have the honor of introducing our guest speaker here. I was introduced uh, to this young lady. Uh, I was on a call with Dean Nelson uh, during the Douglas Leadership uh, Institute, and she was the guest uh, presenter on that evening. And she was speaking about education. And so as she was speaking, you know, I reached out to Dean. I was like, how can I get in touch with her? I, I, I want to bring her in uh, to present at our MLK Day. And, you know, he had to go get her permission because, you know, I'm crazy. And he, he ain't just trying to give somebody my number, amen, because he know I'm going to call him. <laughs> and so I, I sent her an email, say, hey, would you be interested in, in doing this? And she said, well, let me pray on it. It wasn't long. I got an email back, like, prayed on it, ready to go. I'm like, praise the Lord, amen. But as you can see in her bio, I don't really need to lay it out for you. Uh, you're able to read it on your own. She's an educator. She's an entrepreneur. And she's a woman of God, which is most important, amen. And so with that, I'm going to say that she has a flight at 5 o'clock. And so if we don't get out of here on time, don't be upset if you don't get to shake her hand at the end, amen, because I ain't trying to have her husband and her two sons chasing after me <laughs> because the mama didn't make it home. So the wife didn't make it home on time. Amen. So after the choir stirs us up again, amen, the next speaking voice you will hear will be that of Commissioner Monica Sparks. Hear ye her. Amen. <laughs> oh, you, you decide. You choir. <laughs> Thank you. 
told on me. I don't mind being puked and scorned. Cause every time you tell a lie on me, it's another brick in my brand new home. We're going where? stranger here this whole world is not my home you're gonna get up one of these mornings thank god i'll be gone on home we're going where
I'm sorry I walked up here a little too soon, but I wasn't ready for y'all to stop because y'all jamming up here today. Very, very good. Very good. That's the good news of Jesus when we can all get together. Amen. I see we've got all kinds of persuasions here. We've got Caucasians, we've got black, we've got everybody in the house tonight. That's heaven, right? That's heaven. And I could imagine this choir is going to be in heaven because y'all sound great. So y'all all going, y'all all going. Okay, so Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I am so excited. This is one of my most favorite holidays. And the reason why is because it's a day of service. A day of service, uh, you know, some people use it to get off work. They don't want to go into work. But this is truly a day to celebrate a man who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Yes, he did. So let me get my notes here. But before I do that, I want to... Uh, tell the pastor a secret. This is not me in this bulletin. This is my identical twin sister, Jessica Ann Tyson. Yes, the internet does that a lot. She didn't mind that you borrowed her picture. We look so much alike, so that's okay. So I want to get praise God and give honor to the wonderful Pastor McCullough and his beautiful wife, Miss Annette, and the MLK committee, some of who I met last night, Miss Marquetta and Mr. Mack, very beautiful people, under the blessed Southern hospitality uh, that was extended to me yesterday. I, do y'all know y'all's pastor can cook? The people that attend, you know your pastor can cook? And now I know too. And all of Michigan's about to know. So we just really, really you know, appreciate as speakers when people invite us in. And I'm here for you today. This message is from the Holy Spirit. That's how I operate. I believe in asking God to guide me and to lead me. So this message is for you today. Um, I want to say thank you for that. And I also want to do a disclaimer. Y'all didn't know this either. I'm a preacher's kid. So I was given a little bit of time to speak. Um, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. Number one, to honor the time. And number two, not to put anybody in a sleep coma. Okay? So we don't want to go on boredom here. Uh, I remember going to church as a child, and sometimes I didn't quite understand what the man of God was saying. Um, you know, it was a little over and above my head. I love to see this little baby right here just singing God's praises. Don't you stop, sweetie. And some of the other children that are out here. So this message, I want to be relatable to everyone. We have from 8 to 80 in the building today. So we want to make sure that no one misses out on God's blessings because his blessings maketh rich, right? And addeth no sorrow to it. So my friends, uh, the seasoned folk, y'all probably know some of these scriptures and you want to like go through them really quickly and all of that. But I'm trying to make a point today. So hold on. And ride with me, okay? Thank you. So for justice, I'll make a difference. Hmm. I want to dissect that. Because, Pastor, I think this is an excellent topic. But while I think it's an excellent topic, I feel like there's two words that we probably could have stretched ourselves, probably could have added on just a little bit. And sacrifice. Yes. So for justice, I'll make a difference and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We all want justice when it applies to us, but when we're sowing our seeds of justice to make a difference, are we making any sacrifices? So this is a celebrated day, all of you that came out. The choir, I know you spent a lot of time getting together, so that is definitely a sacrifice. We don't want to discount any of the sacrifices that we make on behalf of God. It's so nice to go to the Starbucks, and I see you guys have a, a Roy Rogers burgers here, and it's nice to pay it forward, buy someone's coffee while you're staying in the line there. Um, it's a good feeling to pay for the senior citizens three items of groceries that they have on the conveyor belt. Um, what about donating to the shelter? Feels really good 
giving them clothes you can't fit, maybe clothes that are 10 years old, out of date, out of style? Or what about cleaning and going to your pantry to get rid of some of those old cans of food that you're never really going to eat? Maybe you got them on sale. Maybe they were donated to you, so you're going to re-gift them. What difference are we really willing to make for justice? The word justice does have biblical roots. God, who time and time again shows his compassion to the weak, the vulnerable, the marginalized, the disenfranchised and disinherited for Christians. That would be us, y'all. Okay, that's us right here. Make no mistake about it. The pursuit of justice for the poor and oppressed are as divisive, I mean, excuse me, they are a dis- divisive mark for people who submit to the will of God. It seems like we can't say the word being Christian anymore. We're persecuted. You can't stand up for what you believe anymore. You're persecuted. So what are we willing to do? What difference are we willing to make for justice? What's the sacrifice that we're willing to make? We open the dictionary, and justice has actually 25 different meanings. So I will just go with the Bible. How about that? We'll make some biblical references to justice, which means to do what's right, first and foremost. It's a relational term, people living in the right relationship with God, with one another and natural creation. From a scriptural point, justice means loving our neighbors as we, what? Love, oh, y'all know a little Bible in here, okay. As we love ourselves and is rooted in the character and the very nature of a loving God. We try to make God seem like some monster, and we let the world think it's okay. God is not a monster. God is just and loving. So we are called to do justice and live in love, which takes a what? A sacrifice. How many parents do we have here in the church today? Raise your hand. Okay, we got a lot of parents. What choir? We got a couple. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, they're not telling it. Okay. So we have some parents in the church today. Um, If you're a parent, you understand sacrifice. You probably understand patience a little better, but you do understand sacrifice. So what would Martin Luther King, the great, he was a great man, Martin Luther King Jr., who we had to wait till he passed away to figure out how great he was, Let's stop doing that, people. Give them their flowers while they're alive. What would he be doing today? What would he say about this messaging today? We know that he sacrificed. He was a husband, a father, a teacher, a preacher, a spiritual leader, and a political leader. I believe because of his sacrifice, I'm standing here today. I believe y'all are able to stand here today. You're able to sing today because of the sacrifices that he made for us. And, of course, the ultimate sacrifice that God made for us. We're all able to be here within his love and grace. So we have to look at the rights, the privileges, and the responsibilities that we all have for justice so you can choose to make a difference. Because now here's the thing about that. It's a choice. God gave us free will. So it's a choice whether you're going to make a difference or not. When I look at the political, I like to do the research before I go somewhere, and I look at the political demographics in your area. Uh, I have to ask myself, has the MLK legacy been entrenched enough for you to carry on this dream? Huh. Dr. King left the nugget when he said, I cannot do great things. Oh, if, excuse me, I cannot do great things. I can do small things in a great way. So that means everyone can participate. From the baby who's singing his heart out to everyone. Even the people on Zoom. Where's that camera at? Okay. I believe that MLK's life was not in vain, but we need to continue the dream. 
And remember one thing, dreams don't work unless you do. So it's time for an assessment. For justice, ask yourself, are you making a difference? And then if you are, what is the difference that you're making? Are you making any sacrifices? If not, okay, it's time. And we can do this together. We can reach the promised land. We're not going to leave anybody behind today, are we? Turn to your neighbor on, on the right. I'm going to turn to the neighbor on the right and ask him, what can you and I do together to make a difference? That's right. Now, don't answer it. That's just putting something in your mind there. I'm just planting some seeds. What creates real impacts and makes a difference? Not just posting social media for another day. There's going to be millions and millions of Facebook posts today, hashtag MLK2023. There's going to be a TikTok somewhere. There's going to be an Instagram. All about today. But what's going to happen tomorrow? What happens next? And then what difference did we really make for justice? See, with justice, you have to be intentional, okay? It's just not something that's fly by night. That's why the sacrifice is so important, because sacrifice has a significance that goes far beyond today, far beyond any TikTok, far beyond any meme. Sacrifice reaches into tomorrow and the next day and the next day for a lasting impression. Amen. Thank you. I got one cheerleader. All right. Hey. God uses people, right? And the Bible has shown us time and time and time again that the people have to be the willing vessels. Are you that vessel? Amen. We have to start thinking for ourselves. What do we really like? What do we want to do? So we ask ourselves, how committed are we to this sacrifice? In that question, I know many Christians say they're committed to God, yet um, they're zooming in now. For the sake of the assembly, forsake not yourselves assembling together is what the Bible tells us. Now, I'm not dogging anybody on Zoom. I'm just saying, like, come back to church, <laughs> right? So why is this, this so sad? Because God knows how easy it is to sit around in your PJs, on your phone, on your computer, instead of getting in your car, putting a little gas in, and driving to church. We were all smiles and getting along till I said that. <laughs> See, that's the sacrifice right there. In live stream, don't turn off. Um, unless you're going to come here to the house of God, then you can turn off the phone. But we have some seats for you. Not many. We kind of packed up in here, but we're waiting. We're here whenever you're ready. I'm just giving them a message for you, Pastor. And bring your offerings with you because, you know, it costs money to be in here. Consumers, electric, gas. I don't know if you guys have consumers. We have consumers in DTE. When you come in here, you expect to sit on a pew. You expect to be warm. Amen? Yes? So everybody that gave the offering today, thank you. I'm just saying thank you. Because I am a county commissioner, I know that it takes money, not just to make money, but to make people comfortable. So your gift is always welcome here at the church. So don't forget that. You want to pay for your house, pay for God's house too. So I want to be friends again. I want to be friends again. Uh, we can see the smiling faces of the people here. There's an energy that you get when you come to the house of God. So you want to see those faces. You want to see the sights. I think it smells like chicken. Somebody mentioned chicken earlier. Hey, Amen. So my proposal to you today is to make a difference, to participate in the area of justice right here in Warrington. So I'm going to bring it down from Michigan, boop right here to Warrington, so that you may not have thought about being a servant leader to your community. 
because I'm not just a politician. I'm a servant leader. I'm serving in my third term as a Kent County Commissioner, and I rose. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I rose through the ranks. I'm not supposed to be here. I grew up very poor, grew up in foster care. I grew up eating out of trash cans. Oh, didn't know that because you got pretty shoes on, did you? D didn't know that, did you? But God. Uh -huh. Right there. So I want to talk to you about my position. I serve 655,000 people, 655,000. I work with a budget of over $450 million. It's not mine. It's not mine. <laughs> it's for the people. It's for me to service seniors, veterans, families, individuals, and those with special needs to cover our court systems, parks, recreation, mental health, our sheriff departments, jails, waste, water, sewer, agricultural systems, and more. So for those of you who are talking about in your head at separation between church and state, I want to share my biblical foundation and the case for why you, as Christians, should be more involved as servant leaders. Uh, someone said, hurry up, get to the Bible. Okay, I'm going to get there. The Holy Bible is the most read book in the world. In the past 50 years, the Bible has sold more than 3.9 billion with the B copies. Amen. Now, it's the most recognizable book and the most famous book that has ever been published, followed by the Quran and the Harry Potter series. Yes, that's saying something. So 1 Peter 3 and 22 says, Who has gone into heaven and who is at the right hand of God? Angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. As this beautiful Bible verse conveys, all political leaders are taught that God, that we're subject to God. And we should trust God because God has appointed us and not fear man. The Bible pro provides solid, amazing guidance regarding political authorities on this earth, depending on the country that you live in. I'm about to break it down for you. This is why you belong serving your community. You might have a president, a prime minister, or even a king in some parts of the world. So there's a lot of biblical guidance for political leaders on this earth stems from the amazing book of Daniel and the words of the Apostle Paul, who wrote to Christians in the middle of the Greco-Roman era. Roman law concerning figures of power was extremely stringent, and you were required to obey, comply, face arrest, or even death. As Christians now who live in a secular world, a different secular society, government, political leaders, now they're all part of our daily lives in different ways, whether big or small. The Bible conveys how Christians ought to conduct themselves with regards to political leaders and government in the world. So Jan Daniel 2 and 20 and 21, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, his wisdom and might. 21, and he changes the times and the season. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. That's why understanding is so important in the Bible. With all thy getting, get a understanding. Amen. In this Bible verse, Daniel gives a beautiful praise to God for saving him and his friends from the government with Nebuchadnezzar. Anybody remember that story? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay. It teaches us who is in the backdrop of the political world, none other than God. As he removes kings, raises up kings, we might not always like who's in power, but know that God, that God is in control. So we look at him raising people to power, similar to the book of Esther. He removes the kings, he raises up the kings, since the kings and the queens. So the political stewardship 
of God is exercised in various ways with Israel, there was always some overlap between political and spiritual leadership. And Israel had many different leaders, tribal leaders, elders, judges. Anybody remember Deborah? Okay, ladies, I'm speaking to you too. What does making a difference mean? Not depending on others to save you. We are called and already saved and redeemed, right? Walk in your power then. During COVID, we walked in fear, period. I've never seen the church buckle the way I saw it buckle during COVID, period. God has not given us that spirit. When we saw that was a fearful spirit, we knew it was not of him because he gave us a spirit of what? Love, power, and a sound mind. And that's how we are to operate. The Bible is all about politics. Talks about kings, queens, emperors, judges, commissioners, leaders that govern. Jesus, yeah, that's the ultimate governor the ultimate lordship, right? So if we believe that making a difference for justice should be easy, or if we put God first, it can happen. What are some of the areas and the ways that you can make a difference as a servant leader? You're not too small. You are great in God's eyes. You are fearfully and Wonderfully made. Oh, this Bible, this church knows the Bible. Okay. You belong to him and him alone. As an heir of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you need to start acting like it. I can say this stuff and go home. That's all politics is. It's it's who's governing. When you govern, you can make a difference. The issue is we don't talk about government and church because someone said separation of church and state. And if Jesus is the ultimate lordship, then why should people stay out of running the state? That is my humble opinion. We were designed as Christians to make sure that things go God's way. He needs the willing vessels. So what do we do? I think I have a graphic that's up there, maybe. Okay, thank you. So I like to break it down. I have ADHD, so I have to break things down as my superpower. My superpower is getting a lot done, but writing and making sure that I have things in a particular order. So I'm going to go with the young lady who did the beautiful poem earlier, Justice. I'm going to tell you about justice as it relates to you and your political future. So Justice. Just us mentality is not going to work. We need to be inclusive of everyone for the human race to succeed. Thank you. And understand, understand why the timing is now. Life is under attack. People are under attack. Men are under attack. Period. It's an all-out war on men right now. Women, if you have a man, you need to pray for him consistently. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Thank you. So we have to make sure that we know what's going on right now. Speak life into your community. Stop all this negativity. Oh, they ain't never going to be. They ain't never going to do. It ain't enough of this. It's not enough of that. What you doing? For the sake of justice, what sacrifice are you making? Speak life into your community. Speak life into your babies and into the kids, into your family, into your family structure, into your businesses, into your foundations. Speak life. Talk to your neighbors, your family, your friends, and guess what? We need to be willing to listen. You probably need to listen more than you talk. You've got two eyes, two ears, and one mouth for a reason. Some of y'all catch that later. So we need to be willing to listen and learn 
as well. We don't have the secrets and the clues and the cues for everything. No one person is an island. We need each other, period. So let's talk about investment. Invest your time. Don't say I'm spending time at church. You're not spending time here. You're investing your time. You're investing in the kingdom of God. Invest your time and make it count. Get involved and be intentional now. Communicate with your leaders. They work for you. Newsflash, if I get a call, if I get someone that sends me an email, it's not my obligation to ignore them. My obligation is to answer them. They elected me. So make sure you talk to your elected officials. They work for you, and they need to hear your voice. Educate yourself on your political landscape. What are all the opportunities that are here to be a servant leader, not just a politician? I don't like them so much. So rally around the righteous people. That's the easiest thing you can do is vote. I saw just here um, that there was a gentleman, uh, Carlos Renard, is that his name? He lost by 11 votes. 11 votes. Pardon me? Oh. If I could have voted for you, I would have. And you should have won. 11 votes. That is saying something because he ran against an incumbent. So 11 votes. Who in here didn't vote? From what I read on him, he was a stand-up guy. And I was really excited to find out a little bit more about him, but very saddened to find that he had lost. We're going to do better next time. Amen, everybody. So when we're looking at communicating our leaders and educating ourselves, rallying around the people, righteous people, that's an acceptable sacrifice is voting. It's not who you vote for. We don't have to think of an R or D. I'm a Democrat and my twin sister's a Republican. We get along just fine. Why? Because nothing's going to shake me from her love. Nothing's going to make us separate. Not somebody in Washington, not somebody uh, anywhere around the world. Because she's my sister. Family matters. Family. Okay, y'all clapping, but when they call you and they start talking about somebody else, don't be upset. Just listen. And it's okay. We're in a democracy. America is the best country in the world. You can't go anywhere else and get the freedoms that we have here. So be okay with your freedom and everyone else's freedom as well. Just make sure you vote. Start local and small. We can identify today the dreamers, the leaders, the people who are willing to make a difference for justice and make a sacrifice. See, justice is not going to happen on its own because of our history, our very foundation with managerial racism, our structure. You can call them back. Or you want to answer it? It's okay. <laughs> Tell them you're getting a good lesson right now. So we're going to talk about justice. And the only way to level the playing field is to be empowered to be in power. So let's get involved. Local governments, we talked about that. Um, we talked about people making sure they pay the bills around here, help pay the bills. We did that. Mm, check that off my list. I always like to help the pastors out. I'm telling you, because it's so tough to be a pastor right now. You have people that are watching from Zoom. They don't want to come in, but that also means that they don't usually send their money in it either. But they want a church to standing when they eventually come back. So community development in your area, you're about 10,000 individuals, 10% black, 8.9 Latino, 1% Asian, 75% white, 56% women, and you have a budget of $32.6 million here in Warrington. Oh, I do my research. Mm -hmm. 
So what does that mean for you? Oh, that means there's a lot of room for you. Everyone here to start somewhere. I don't care what your age. I don't care what your um, in, in your economic, socioeconomic status. You can make a difference, period. That's right. So I want to see who are the bona fide dream keepers and who's willing to make the sacrifice today. So let's raise your hand if you care about any of the following. The economy. Oh, lots of people in the choir. Oh, okay, a few people out here. Oh, they rich. They, they rich. They don't care about the economy. What about jobs? Yeah. Oh, okay, oh, we care about some jobs? Okay, we care about some jobs. What about food and agricultural? Mm-hmm, yep, yep, that's right. Guess what? No farms, no food, people. Remember that. And I don't want any fake meat. <laughs> Policing. Who cares about policing? Okay. What about health care? Oh, yeah, everybody's hand should be raised on health care. You get sick. You go in for five seconds, and you're going to owe them about a million dollars. Seniors, who cares about my baby seniors? Okay, seniors are very important to me. Veterans, okay, yes, yes, yes. Very important to me. My father is a Korean War Purple Heart veteran. So veterans are very important. Education. Who cares about education? Okay. Okay. So what else do we care about? Let's let's see about some raising some hands again. What about safe schools? Anybody care about safe schools? Okay. What about safe community? Oh yeah. What about learning and education? What about children? What about fighting racism? What about environmental justice, like some clean water, roads, traffic? Any of that stuff matter? Okay. Housing. Oh, Lord, we can't even get on that. Definitely affordable housing. And I want to go past affordable. I want to say attainable, because what one person can afford may not be what the average person can afford. So let's take a stand for justice. Let's see uh, who's going to take a stand to make a difference tomorrow. We're going to have somebody on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But what about this local community? Uh, you can still do your social media and make a big difference, young people. I don't want to discourage you because I love social media and TikTok. I love all of that. But I want to encourage you to think past being a follower to be a respected leader and think past having friends to having constituents. Now I want you to stand up if you're able to do the following, because now we're going to take a different assessment. We, we pretty much, Pastor, this is between me and you right here. We pretty much understand that everybody cares about something or other, okay? We understand that. But let's see who's willing to make the sacrifice. Let's see who can do this. Let's see. So stand up if you're able to do the following. One to two days out of 30 days, attend a meeting. Zoom, you can join us too. We can't see you, but you can join us. You can participate. Okay. All right. We got some people. Well, okay, good. Oh, I like it. Okay. What about attend a meeting in person or on Zoom? Can anybody do that? In person or on Zoom? Okay, we can do that. What about write a letter? or email about something that you didn't like or something that you liked. Don't let me check your Facebook pages. We are so quick to post when we're feeling down, sad, someone upset us, or when we need a prayer. But we specifically don't say what, just pray for me, which leads to more mess, but I'm gonna get off that. Who can do research? Anybody here? Boom, Google makes it real easy for you. All you got to do is type in a word. You right there. You were saying it real good. I know you can do some research. Okay. Make a decision. Who can make a decision and articulate the way they feel and talk during a meeting? Who can do that? Anybody? Okay. All right. Now, who can vote? <laughs> Okay, every, everybody should be standing up then, but they're not. That's right. You got to register. Amen. Amen. So what's at stake right now? 
all of this, all of these people right here at stake. 11 votes for a man of color. A good man of color, thank you. What's at stake? You should have had me come in before the vote happened, dude. I just, don't give up. So what's in stake, at stake? You, every single one of you had an issue that you could get around, that you can rally around. Your servant leaders, your children of the most high, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, but we don't act like it. That's on us. That falls back on us. So you can choose today, choose ye this day to make a difference for justice, you can choose today to make sacrifices, and they are big sacrifices. I know, you know, you have to go vote, you got to leave work, you got to do all these things, but 11 votes for a good man. Look at your neighbor and say, for justice, I'll make a difference. <laughs> Pastor, please stand up. Are you pastors of any of these other people up here? Gentlemen, okay, please stand up. I thank you for that. Now look at your pastors and say, for justice, I'll make a difference. I just made you made a pledge. You didn't even know it. Now look to heaven and say, for justice, I'll make a difference. And make the sacrifice. Now, what you do tomorrow is up to you. That's up to you. But today, take everything, all this good singing and these good words and that excellent prayer and uh, congratulations to all the people who won the awards and then the MLK committee that did all the work. Don't let it be in vain. You can start at the school board. Parents, you can get on the PTO, the PTA, you can do so many things. It doesn't take anything but time. You are more qualified than you realize if you're willing to make the commitment. The qualifications will follow. But if you start early enough, I see all kinds of people in here that the Holy Spirit is telling me that I see commissioners, I see state reps, I see school board members, I see, oh, Jesus, I see people that can make a difference. I see another mayor. Amen. Okay, president, okay, how about president? We'll go with that. Take this message and hold it close to you. Don't let these words be in vain because they're for you, designed by the Holy Spirit to help enrich, and enrich your life and the life of your community. We all need a better future, but it's going to take all of us to make it happen. Blessings to you all. Make a difference. Make a difference. For justice, I will make a difference and sacrifice. Amen. And she said earlier that we all want justice when it's directed toward us. But are you willing to make the sacrifice to make sure everybody else gets it? And for those who joined us for our roundtable discussion this morning, it ain't just for people who look like me. All right. Justice should be going toward everybody. I got quiet on that one. So maybe there's still some people in here who just want justice for us, but not necessarily worried about justice for others. 
You have to be willing to make the sacrifice. And the reason that that's really important is because God made a sacrifice for you. He sacrificed his one and only son. And we don't gather together just to hoop and holler and to say amen and to laugh and to sing. Ultimately, we come together to direct people to the one who can save them. And there may be someone under the sound of my voice who has never received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. We're not going to close these doors, amen, because the doors of the church are always open. Thanks be to God, they are never closed. And so whether you're here in person or you're watching online, Jesus is available to you right now. As I often tell Mount Zion, changing your position in the church ain't going to get you into heaven. I can have you walk down to this aisle, but if your heart don't change, you're going to go back to your seat as much of a devil as you did when you walked in. And so we're looking for heart change. And so I'm not asking anyone to move physically, but I am asking you to examine your heart. And once again, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, why not do that now? Because without him as your Savior, you do realize that you are at war with God. Can I give you a secret? That's a war you can't win. But he sent a general for you to be able to guide you through this war. Matter of fact, you don't even have to fight it. You just have to stand beside him. He's already fought the battle for you. And so I'm going to ask Paula to come as she does the presentation for the speaker. But in the time that it takes her to come, examine your heart. Do you have Jesus, not as grandma's Savior, not as your mama's Savior, but do you have him as your personal, not just Savior, Lord and Savior? It's a package deal. You can't have one without the other. Just meditate on that for a moment. I can't beat that. I am here to present two plaques today. First of all, to our guest speaker, we thank you that you have come here to join us today. Thank your family for us also. We heard what you said, and we're going to try to do the things that you said we can do. And we hope one day that we will have him in office. And if not him, someone else. So I thank you. I ask God to continue to bless you in all that you do for the young, the seniors, the veterans, for everyone. Thank you, and God. And I have one more plaque because we all need a leader, and we had a worship leader today, and we thank him for that. He's looking at me like, you're talking about me? I absolutely am talking about Reverend Ralph Williams. And we thank you, Reverend Williams. If there's anything that we can do for you here at Mount Zion, please don't ever hesitate to ask us. God bless you. And we thank his wife for introducing him. Just one more thing. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. You know, we went through years where we couldn't have our Martin Luther King service. But thanks to God, we're all here again in the sanctuary. So we thank you, and I pray that God will continue to bless each and every one of you. Thank you, and amen. Amen. If you stand up, I won't speak as long. But if you remain seated, amen. So I want to thank everyone once again for being here today. Uh, Blessings to our guest speaker, amen, uh, for giving us a challenge, amen, to this wonderful choir and the musicians, amen. It's okay to clap.
Amen. To the clergy who have assembled here, I uh, know we have some uh, political folks who were here. They left out uh, in the meantime. Uh, but I have a challenge for the pastors here. Next Sunday is Sanctity of Life Sunday. Abortion is not a political issue. Stop hiding behind that. Abortion is a moral issue. I challenge you to preach about abortion next Sunday. I challenge you to get involved in your communities and the pregnancy centers to help these young men and these young women when they're in that situation. One of the things that attracted me to her, she was president of the Democrats for Life. And I know that's, y'all know y'all Democrats in here. I, ain't, I don't like none of y'all, quite honestly. Democrat or Republican. Right? But, but y'all know how y'all are. You're afraid to say anything against your party of choice. And I say the same thing to Republicans. But when it don't line up with the word of God, you have an obligation to speak against it. Amen? Ain't nobody telling you to switch parties. But if you know your party is not doing something that's in line with the word of God, be bold. Make that sacrifice. Amen? Speak up against it. I know I wasn't going to get a whole lot of amens on that. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory and honor. Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for allowing us to gather together once again. I pray, Father God, uh, for safe travels for all those who have gathered here today. Father God, we pray for the food that has been prepared, for the nourishment of our bodies. We pray, dear Lord, these things in the name that's above every name. It's in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus we pray and give thanks. Amen. God bless you. Have a smile upon you.